All right, let's call a meeting to order. Can I do a roll call? Sure. Cesar? Here. Eckhoff? Here. Garcia? Here. Krajewski? Here. Rutledge? Here. Tornatori? All right, move on. Anybody have anybody sign for public comment? No public comment. Okay. <laughs> the chairman's report is uh, later we're going to hear from uh, Laura regarding our salary, <laughs> salary survey. I think when I first took over as animal services, we did one years ago. And I think uh, some of the stuff Laura is going to tell you about came up when we did it years ago, too, is we tried to do comparables to other counties. And um, we saw what the names of their um, uh, descriptions of their people were and ours. What we found out was that when we looked at what the workload was and what they did, um, ours did a lot more than the other ones. So we did some adjustments back then. And clearly now, you know, as we're doing this uh, campus wide, uh, we're underpaid and we're having a hard time with uh, getting people in some of these positions we're trying to fill. And we know that we're going to be raising these salaries. Um, but the one thing Laura was struggling with was when we post new positions, if we post them at what we think the market should be and what we're going to move it to, People that are working here, are like, oh, well, some company's making more than me, they just hired. And if we don't post them, then we're not getting the quality of people in either. So Laura did a good job in speeding up the process here and has done a remarkable job in the spreadsheet she's put together. Dawn and I met this uh, last week to kind of go over them, but she gave us a private sector, public sector analysis of what everybody did. Um, we're going to hear more about that in a minute. Um, and then we're doing a, with the rabbits. I, I think I've done like six different interviews over the last six months with rabbits. Yeah, rabbits. News stations and Lord and I were on Fox the other day and, and newspapers. We've got a lot of rabbits here. And a lot of them are coming from, as the publicity is getting out there, other people in other counties are figuring out that we take rabbits too. So we're getting a lot of um, ones coming from Kane or Will, just for the fact that their animal service or control doesn't take them. Um, they won't take rabbits. So they tell them to come to see us. The alternative is we don't take them and let them go. Why are people bringing in so many rabbits? I mean, were these like Easter gifts that now that it's getting colder outside and winter is coming? But they don't well, don't it's not necessarily bar. an Easter thing as much as there's such a uh, an inexpensive impulse buy at the pet stores that people are making these purchases without fully understanding because there's, there's no education really that's happening when you're walking into the pet store and buying an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're buying these, you know, cheap $40 rabbits that are, are not fixed. There's a problem with a lot of the pet stores missexing them. So you end up, you know, you think you buy two females, but then one or two litters later, you've got, you, know, you realize, <laughs> oh, well, I got a male and a female. And, um, and it's very rare that you only have one accidental litter because they can get pregnant the same day they give birth. Oh, wow. And they hide their babies when they give birth in the bedding. So you may not even realize you've had bedding or babies for a couple of days and then she's pregnant again. And next thing you know, that second litter comes and that's when people panic and then are calling us saying, okay, I've got a lot of rabbits now. So um, yeah, I think it, we're just, we're seeing a lot of impulse buys of people not really understanding what's involved. Is this an annual thing? Does this happen every year or is it more? It just oh, seems like it's, this. It, 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 it's like been more. getting worse and worse yeah. over the years. Um, so this year alone, we've taken in 222 rabbits. Wow. And that's with us even pushing owner surrender appointments out pretty significantly right now. We're even allowing people to surrender, but then they're fostering their own pets just so that we can free up cage space in the shelter. And cage space of which is even was 2019. So 109, we've already pretty much doubled Double. that. Yeah. And the year's not over. And the phone calls are not stopping. We've had landlords bring rabbits in saying that they were left at the apartment. You know, like oh, people moved out or, you know, so, like, you know, were evicted or something. And, and being abandoned even outside. How do you yeah. slow that down? I mean, so we're doing a rabbit education event this coming Saturday, and we're doing a lot of, um, we've got webinars, we've got handouts, we've got a couple other things we're doing just to kind of start putting more information out to the public to spread the word about getting the education out there. Like, this is not an easy pet. Um, and then with the help of Brian doing some of these interviews and, you know, the, the media around it is really helpful too. So Did you hear the response from the Daily Herald article that Sorry, yeah, we get a lot of people that they're they're then reaching out saying, how can I help? So they're donating in-kind items. Um, we've got a couple of new fosters that are coming on board. 
Um, and if this education event goes well, we might try to add some more of these in-person education events. We're also behind the scenes trying to reach out to Will and Kane and talking to them about not only the rabbits, but they're sending over surrender animals too, because um, they're backed up for months before they'll even take somebody in to even look at an owner surrender. They're trying to say, you know, maybe try to beef up your stuff and not send as much here right now, especially on the rabbit side. Yeah. Are we charge out of county transfer? We, we do. So to surrender a rabbit, if you're in county is $10. If you're out of county, it's 50. I mean, that doesn't come anywhere close to what it costs to spay, neuter, mm -hmm. microchip. And rabbits tend to have a longer length of stay with us because they have to be a certain age before they can be neutered. And the recovery from those surgeries is longer. It's not like Dr. Hannock, you know, neuters a cat and it can go on the adoption floor the next day. So they definitely are. And there's also not the demand from the public for rabbits. So we've got more animals than we have people wanting to adopt them. So they're staying in our system so much longer. And you raise the price, the alternative is they just don't crop it off right. and just let it go. Yeah. 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 Which they're yeah, still I've doing. seen the postings for that recently. So they're getting out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They even do that with the dogs too. Take it in, and that's the thing picking up it as a stray. We got a motion to approve our minutes from September 21st. So moved, second. Any questions, comments, changes, additions? They all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <laughs> grants. Do we have I just was going to let the uh, committee know that DuPage Animal Friends was planning on still um, issuing another unrestricted grant for next fiscal year. I haven't gotten the formal paperwork for it, so I hope to have it on um, the agenda for. Our next committee meeting, but they've been, I want to say thank you to them. They've been phenomenal in supporting all this extra work that we're able to do, taking in all the rabbits that we do, for example, is, is possible because of them. So we should still see that for next fiscal year. Is this restricted for certain things? It's or? unrestricted. Okay. Yeah, they give us the, the opportunity to decide how to spend it. Okay, perfect. They give you a dollar amount? We've been getting $50,000. They're in their budgeting process right now, so I don't know if it's going to be 50 or. Okay. Yeah. Administrative update? Yeah, I, I was going to just quickly share that we've got about 175 animals in our care, 78 of those in foster, 97 in the shelter. So grateful for our foster families because if we were to have all 175 in the building, we would be in a world of hurt, mm -hmm. uh, especially now because we've been short-staffed for some time. We have four full-time positions we're looking to fill and two part-time wow. positions. And when you're already a lean staff of about 20 full-time people and a handful of part-time people, it's been rough. Um, we have started onboarding some new volunteers. We're getting creative and even onboarding volunteers in some of our like front office positions, not even necessarily caring for animals, but teaching them how to answer phones from the general public or at least gather some high level information so that a staff member can call them back once they get freed up. Um, I also, uh, we talked a little bit about the rabbits. It continues to be an ongoing thing. But we've also had a lot of like tougher medical cases recently. And thank you to DuPage Animal Friends donors once again. Been hit by a car dog that we were able to send to um, an orthopedic surgeon. Um, we've had another dog that needs um, TPLO surgery, which Dr. Hannett can explain what that is probably much better than I can. Uh, but that's you know five thousand dollar surgery. CT scans on cats. She mm -hmm. just removed a leg from another cat. It's just a lot of rough cases lately. Yeah, a lot of medical, a lot of um, using uh, IDEX, you know, as far as laboratory tests. You know, we try to, we try not to run tests unless we need to, but, you know, I have a cat right now, Amarilla, who is very yellow, ictric, and things like that. So we'll probably do a liver biopsy on her Thursday. So, yeah, just some, and, th and that's kind of the nature of the beast. We don't often get, you know, the easy adoption ones. If you're a rescue, you get to pick which animals you want to bring in. You know, we're brought animals either because sometimes they might be ill or neglected or at their end of their life or, you know, in poor shape and stuff like that. So it's lately, it seems like it's a little bit more obvious as far as getting them back to where they're healthy and happy and can be adopted. So, yeah, um, so that, that's possible because of friends um, and all the work they do fundraising for us that we can not even think twice about you know, spending $5,000 on a hit by car dog, you know, where a lot of other government shelters would just put that dog down. And the public wants to see us saving those animals. Um, and because our, our team has done such a great job also 
recruiting foster families, you know, this dog is recovering in a foster home. It's not even in the shelter, which is the best place for it. And to no be. owner came forward, apparently. No owner came forward for it, no. If no. the finder, the person that found the dog would like to adopt, so they're currently fostering. Nice. So yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And and a lot of times we amputate the leg, you know, I mean when you have especially when it's old fractures or the fractures are in the joint. So it is kind of nice to be able to send them out for you know a repair. So yeah. Um, and we've had a couple of pop-up adoption events, which have been very successful. We hope to see our kitten season slowing down now, and we're towards the tail end of our um, spay neuter surgery for the uh, season for the vehicle. So that'll be getting put away here soon. But we've been doing a fair amount of public education events with the vehicle this year too. So yeah, it's been used like it it hasn't been used before, I think, with our new humane educator, Laura Winnie. She's really been getting it out uh, very often. And, um, and we're going to extend the, the vehicle season as far as surgery a couple of weeks, probably into November. Uh, the demand for feral fixers as far as to get their cats spay neutered um, is pretty great. So, um, so our doctor is uh, Dr. Romaldo will come in a couple more extra days into November. We like to put it away before there's a frost because it's not usually winterized. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's, it's getting a lot of use this year. Perfect. That's it. Is there any old business? On to new business, Laura's going to talk a little bit about the animal service equity evaluation. And like I said, um, in addition to doing the surveys, both private and public uh, sectors out there. Also, most of the positions at animal services are unique to the county. Um, they're not, uh, there's only maybe two that are similar in the county. So we also looked at uh, the responsibilities and maybe the uh, class codes. I think some of the class codes, uh, Laura, Dawn, and I talked about those, and we kind of uh, made some adjustments to some of the codes also, but I'll let Laura go through what she did. Yeah, so this is part of the broader um, peek at what's happening in other departments too. And because our department is so unique and we did a fair amount of extensive research from private and public sector, I wanted to give our committee here an opportunity just to see what data we did collect and give you an opportunity to ask questions because this will be presented as part of the bigger whole of everything else happening within other departments. Um, and I'm really grateful to the HR department because they did all the legwork of foying all the other county and other government agencies that had animal control or sheltering type positions. And then we also took a look at private sector stuff, which is a little harder to find. Um, we're such a unique entity in terms of being animal control and animal sheltering that we don't really align with a lot of what the humane societies do. But we were able to identify a couple open positions through job postings. Uh, we did a, a survey with a coalition group that we're in to understand what kind of within a range what they're paying their people. And then we tried to look at 990s. Um, they tend to post their highest level positions on the, the AG 990 ILs. And sometimes that data, data lags a little bit. It's at least two years behind. Yeah, progress, so. but I think you'll find in what I emailed you, uh, we have a pretty good comprehensive data set. And then what we did is we said, okay, what do our people do? Uh, we listed key tasks and then assigned a percentage according to what we were able to identify that other similar positions. So you'll find as you go through there that there's very few positions as we're trying to align them with our people's roles that really did you know, sometimes even half the tasks that we're demanding of our people. Uh, the other thing that was striking was that we found that our uh, required years of experience to be hired into our positions is usually higher than what the other agencies are demanding when they're doing their hiring practices. And then the other piece I didn't put in the memo, but we've also noticed animal control type functions. You know, we are unique in DuPage where we are our own entity, we have a shelter, we do all these other programs for our, our residents and pets, um, where a lot of other animal controls might fall under police departments, you know, sheriff's department, um, sometimes the health departments, and a lot of those other agencies have union contracts in place. So, for example, when we're trying to hire an animal control officer, which is one of the more challenging positions to recruit and, and keep people in. We're competing for jobs like community service officers that are part of those union contracts. Um, and uh, Chicago and Cook are all part of union contracts. So it's just, it's been a bit of a struggle. And in, especially in positions like those, we've had a lot of high turnover. 
Um, and the people that we have been able to retain and keep for a long time, we have some people that have been with us 15, Christy, <laughs> 15, even 20 years. Uh, you know, they're doing it because they just have a passion for public service and what we specifically do in DuPage County, which we're so grateful for, but I don't know that we're showing, that, showing them that in their compensation. So I just wanted to get information ahead of the broader project that's going to be presented, I believe, in November, so that if you guys do have questions about our roles, about what we're paying people, you can feel free to give Dr. Hannock or I a call. And a couple so other things. Okay. So basically, Brian and Laura and I met, and based on the data, we discovered that um, some of our people are hugely underpaid for what they do. Compensation just isn't there, and that could be why it's hard to hire people and retain people. So much like the sheriff's office did um, last year, we want to increase the salaries, but wait, don't worry. Uh, we only budgeted 1.9 million for the rabies tags. And so far this year, we've taken in 2.9 million. Oh, wow. So we are, so wow. our, our equity um, increases that we discussed in our meeting that will be discussed in November will be funded through this, um, the rabies tag. That's great. So, so while we're asking for a lot more money for our people, which they greatly deserve, it is, but it is in the budget, it, including those that have been with us. Correct. Yeah, it's, okay. yeah it's, we pretty much looked at every single position, and then we we pretty much for the last couple of years have had about two million dollars in rabies tag fees. Last maybe three years up until this last year, um, and we've always generated a couple hundred thousand dollars surplus because they've been so good at watching the budget, but. We made that big change last year where we started to you have to buy the rabies tags up front. Um, Laura and her team did a great job in getting some of these vets, um, I guess, up to payment and they just were busy and didn't get paid. Um, we kind of watched the first few months and just wondering if it was prepaid. People bought a lot of tags but hadn't used them yet. I think the population, more people have gotten their animals rabies and more people have adopted animals. It hasn't dropped off. So it looks like that's going to be kind of the new number because of all the changes to clean up and get these doctors and veterinarians on board. So we're clearly, you know, probably going to hit a million dollar surplus. This across the board, uh, what we're looking at doing is about 180 some thousand. Um, so clearly that'll be able to be absorbed into the budget and we'll still be probably carrying a fairly large surplus mm -hmm. next year. And I mean, we didn't budget that. Um, we're going to make a slight adjustment, probably just increase the rabies tags by the same amount, we increase the budget. So I think what would you say, Don? It's about two million is what we budget. We'll probably have two point two, yeah. and then increase salaries by two hundred thousand. So we'll still have a balanced budget, but that two point two is probably very conservative. But I, I just wanted to give people a heads up that I mean, some of these increases are twelve percent, thirteen percent, twenty two point three percent increases. But in my opinion, I'm all on board with this. I think mm -hmm. it's necessary. Yeah, and thank you for bringing up the revenue piece of it. You know, we've. We've been fortunate to have a, a, a net revenue gain the last couple of years. This year, it will be very significant. And that's even with us doing a lot more reduced and waived fees with adoptions and owner surrenders. The, the, the fee revenue from rabies tax sales has been outstanding this year. So. And when somebody's making 40000 they get an 8%, eight thousand dollars which and 48000 is not a lot. They're 40, but that's 20%. So percentages look big, but dollar amounts aren't necessarily, especially majority of the people over there don't make that much money. And I guess the next thing, Nick, do you know when the rest of the campus is going to... Yeah, we're bringing, bringing the entire county forward to the board for consideration in executive session in November. I'm not sure whether it's the first or second meeting. Passage in December and effective January 1 of 2022. Okay. Well, yeah, because the one thing we didn't want to do is go too far ahead of everybody else, even though we got everything done, um, but we don't have any positions that really overlap, so it doesn't have a issue so I think we may just wait to bring it all together at the same time before wants to do that or I mean we're ready to go now but you guys want to just wait till the rest of the campus is there I'm ready to go now I'm saying ready to go now too. especially because Laura Can't it's my understanding has a job that she wants to post but she wants to post it at the higher we're going to post I think we're going to post them at the new number is that correct um yeah, well, oh, we can't because the other people at that level are going to look at that post yes. and go, wait, I'm not paid that much. Yeah, yeah. so it's challenging to post at a higher range yeah. when I've got existing staff 
being paid less. I don't want them to feel right. like they're under, you know, not valued. Because and we're hiring, hiring somebody in. At, at a newer value. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm We're also very conscious of wanting to make sure that, you know, it, I want this, I want this to, um, I wanted to have this conversation now so that if there's questions, you have the opportunity to have a conversation with Dr. Hannick and I about this. But if it makes more sense to, to wait with the rest of the departments um, in order for this to be successful, we can get through the next couple months. You know, you know, Paula and Sheila have said that they're ready to go now. I've said I'm ready to go now. Um, I'd like to hear from Member Tornatore and Member Eka. What's going on? Yeah. If you can't fill those positions and, and can't post at a higher rate to attract that help, I, I absolutely think that we owe that to the people that have stuck with you through COVID. Member Eka? I thought we had done some of this already. Uh, we we made an adjustment to some of our caretaking team a few years ago to create a new position level so that our caretakers could possess, uh, progress from panel assistant to caretaker one, caretaker two, and then we have a supervisor. So we had created a kennel assistant position and then we created a caretaker two position and that was pretty extensive. So yeah, I think they brought the volunteers in and, they, and some of the interns were doing the clean of the cages and stuff and that freed those, the, the senior caretakers to do more training behavioral issues and work with the animals to get them ready for adoption so they're pretty much their task they got moved to a different class code was more than just cleaning the cages and you know um, taking the animals for walks they turned that over to volunteers and interns and then gave them a lot more responsibility in, in working with each animal to try to get them ready for adoption so those are the pretty much two gotta positions do what we got to do for us but is there any way to motivate these other counties they've got the same statutory and constitutional responsibilities we do and i know we save the animals and we put them down but is there some way that i don't know there's organizations in the state that should go to them and say hey you need to pull your weight too so i will share that the NACA, which is the National Animal Care um, Control Association, it has been having conversations about how to change the narrative about what animal control agencies do, how they're serving the public. Um, and we've been talking about the appetite for risk. You know, we see some of these agencies as they, as they grow, um, they actually start taking less risk in terms of how they're serving the community whether it's protecting what they built or whatever, you know, their surpluses or their processes where we see the smaller organizations um, that have less resources are taking on greater risk. And um, they're, they're trying to figure out how you start having conversations with these other agencies that have the capacity to do more. Let's take Cook County, for example, they have the capacity to do more. Why, why isn't that happening? And I don't know if that starts at the, the national level or at the local level. You know, Dr. Hannick can speak from being on the Illinois Animal Control Association Board. There's still a lot of changes or differences, I think, in opinions, right, in terms of what animal control is and, and you know, life-saving and all these other pieces to it. There's even differences within our county as far as municipalities, as far as Certain municipalities provide greater services than others. You know, sometimes if you have an injured cat, they don't respond to a cat, but they might do to a dog. So, yeah, and I think if their residents knew that, that might be alarming. But and then sometimes we're responding just because we don't want you know an injured cat laying in a yard or something. So and as we do campus wide, it seems like every area grows and becomes one of the models for the county to follow or you know, the rest of the state to follow that we're we're pretty good at a lot of the different areas we do. And years ago, animal services had a lot of challenges and issues. And since we brought Dr. Hannick and Laura on board and Christy who held everything together until we did that, <laughs> two pages kind of grown now to it's kind of like the model in the state. And we're doing a lot more services for everybody, you know, thanks to them. But you know, when you do more, it costs a little bit of money also, but um, there are a lot of people starting to ask and models and I don't know how many rescues outside of the page were calling me, especially with the work that you know on the legislative committee and we did with you know trying to get that um puppy bell ban which we got through but these rescues from all over the you know state were calling up you know you guys do this in two pages i talked to these guys and they were all like how do i get it to do it in the county how do i get lake to do it how do i get you know 
again, but it's all the stuff that you guys have implemented from what you've learned when you went on the tra the, the training, when you guys went to different places, we never used to send anybody anywhere. We always have everybody else in departments going to various trainings, but you went to Austin, Texas, Cleveland, learned a lot of the stuff at the top places in the state or country and brought that back here. So you've done a great job. Well, now, sure, it's not just at the county level. We need to see a lot of change happening at the local government levels, our, our cities. So when Dr. Hannock was sharing the CAD example, we have residents that are calling us regularly for wildlife issues and other animal related issues in in-town jurisdictions of DuPage County uh, because they're not getting the help that they want from their own towns. So one of the things that we are slowly easing into is we've surveyed our local police departments to say, hey, if we were to provide some, some in-service training opportunities for your officers, for your dispatchers, what is, what is of interest? And we've done one now on um, animal behavior body language. We've done one on avoiding bites. Now we're easing into bite investigations. And, and the hope is you start, start pulling them in with the things that are more immediately interesting to them. And so that we can build trust and have more conversations about, do you have an after hours plan? If you find uh, a, an injured dog that's critical, don't just stick it in your police department garage overnight until animal services opens up at 8 a.m. Do you have a relationship with an emergency vet that you can take that animal to so it's not suffering in a cage? You know, I, trying to help provide resources and training to our municipal partners so that they can do more is, is one of our chance, goals. We have a chance to, to talk to anybody at DuPage Mirrors and Managers to present something like this at one of their meetings. That's a great idea. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that they're always looking for topics, and I'm sure there's a topic that probably just goes right over the heads of most yeah. of the police chiefs. Maybe not the police. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I need a topic for next week. Next oh, really? Six o'clock. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm there. We're on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. Well, it's on the I'm sure they'll do it. Good. Good. Exec, yeah. exec director is a big volunteer over at West Suburban. So Send she's... people in for public comment. On... Ryan, why don't you write an article for ISACO? Or do you want to write an article for him? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I have a, so, do you guys have arrangements with like BCA and the emergency vet? Uh, so, there really isn't something keeping those municipalities from taking animals there other than they don't know better? I, there, they don't either they don't know better or they don't want to spend the money or it's not a priority in some fashion, but yes, it, I mean, Dr. Hannock's not at the shelter 24-7, sure. so if my officers bring in an injured dog and it's critical, um, we go to emergency vet services in Lyle, or we're going to BCR yeah. Review. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah. we have an agreement for review services for things with them more. So we do. The, a lot of those hospitals offer what they call their rescue or shelter discounts. Okay. So even some of the big surgeries we've been doing recently, and like hit by car dog that came in during the day, we get a discount from those hospitals. So let's yeah. get back to the last thing here. And um, I'm going to physical. I'd, I'd have done this yesterday, but um, I know I was pushing Laura to get this done. Um, just real quick, Nick, I mean, did, we only got two positions that overlap. I mean, is this going to create any problems so for you with the campus? My suggestion would be that maybe Laura sit down with our executive team looking at it, make sure the overlap positions doesn't create uh, an issue, and we can do that today. So, and then you can, once we make sure that that doesn't create a precedent that is, is going to create a problem, then animal services can move forward as quickly as they would like to. But we could meet with them today. And that's why Sarah's sitting over there. Uh, Sarah can meet with uh, Laura, Sarah, and the rest of the team and uh, go through it, make sure the overlaps don't create a problem. Okay, so yeah, look at those two positions. Um, the rest of them, like I said, are unique, so it doesn't matter. We have a lot of, like, going on, I looked at that sheet. There's a lot of unique, there's like 18 pages of codes. There's a lot of unique positions that it's only one person that does that in the type of work in the whole county, so. And then we'll move forward. So you meet with Sarah. Tell me, yes. Go over that, and then we'll bring it forward. It's hopefully next Tuesday. If Good. not, two weeks, three weeks from now. Any other questions or any other old business? Thank you, and thanks, Don, for getting together with Laura and working on that. Okay, without objection, we are adjourned.